God has asked me to focus on him for the next 40 days and I'm going to be obedient to it. So for the next 40 days, we'll be going through the book of Joshua, Daniel, Revelation, and Malachi verse by verse. You can find our gun content on the History of Weapons and Patreon. Those links are below. But get ready to dig deep into the Word of God. It is going to be an awesome ride. Many people have read the book of Daniel, and many people have been taught about the book of Daniel. But not many people have actually taken each word, word by word, and really focused on what does this mean, and then cross-referenced it with other biblical prophecies to truly understand the meanings of what it is that Daniel wrote about and what he saw. Because the book of Daniel is about the past, present, and the future, it's about prophecy. Jesus Christ himself tells us to have a heart for prophecy and understanding the past, present, and the future will truly understand the heart of God because God is a never-changing God. He's the same as he was in the past, as he is in the present, and he will be in the future. And that's exactly what the book of Daniel is about. It's about the heart of God, past, present, and future prophecy. It's an incredible book where you're given insight into the ways of God. It is truly incredible. But to start the book of Daniel, we're just going to jump right in to chapter 1, verse 1. And this first verse, there is so much going on in the very first verse of chapter 1 that you could probably talk about chapter 1, verse 1 uh, for many weeks, which we're not going to, but many of the verses of Daniel are like that, especially when you get to chapter 11 and the warrings of the kings of the north and the south and 12. It, it, there's so much history in that, uh, past, present, and future. So we're just going to jump right in. Uh, welcome to the prophecy of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Now, this event that we just talked about, essentially what you got going on here is uh, Judah and Jerusalem been broken up into two countries. Israel's kind of been destroyed for the most part. Judah's still around. But you have King Jehoiakim. And King Jehoiakim and this event that took place where uh, Jerusalem was besieged by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon is very much documented throughout the, the Bible. Uh, the kings, the books of kings, the books of the kings of Israel talk about this event and talk about Jehoiakim. And the books of Chronicles talk about this event and they talk about Jehoiakim. And Jeremiah was alive during this event and was one of the most significant prophets of God during that time. And he had a lot to say about this exact event as well. So we're going to see what God had to say about this event first. But roughly what you got going on is you have Jerusalem being besieged by Nebuchadnezzar and King Jehoiakim is in charge. So we're going to go back to jo uh, Jeremiah 22 to talk about why is this event in Daniel taking place. Because I think the problem that people have with the Daniel is they read verses, they re they'll read the whole first couple chapters, and they don't take a moment to go, okay, what's going on in this besiege? Yeah, they just say, yeah, it got besieged, but what is actually taking place? So we're going to go to Jeremiah 22, and we're going to pick this up in verse 11, and this is essentially God talking to Jehoiakim. Now, Jehoiakim, let's start, when you look at Chronicles and the books of Kings, which we'll go back to next time, to see what's going on with Jehoiakim. He is the son of King Josiah. King Josiah was greatly beloved by God. It says that there was no other king of Judah before or ever will be that had a heart for God like Josiah. And Jehoiakim is the son, but Jehoiakim was a wicked man, one of the most wicked kings there ever was. And here's what God has to say to him. Jeremiah 22, verse 11. 
For thus says the Lord concerning Shalom, the sons of Josiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Josiah, his father, who went from this place. He shall not return here any more, but he shall die in the place where they have led him captive and shall see this land no more. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's service without wages and gives him nothing for his work who says, I will build myself a wide house with spacious chambers and cut out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilation. Shall you reign because you enclose yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it was well. Was not knowing me, says the Lord. Yet your eyes and your heart are for nothing but your covetousness for shedding innocent blood, and practicing oppression and violence. Ultimately, what he's saying is Jehoiakim was the type of king who enslaved people, gave them away to Babylonian kings and Egyptian kings, and murdered them. Let's read on. Verse 18. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, my sister, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, master, or alas, his glory. What Louis is saying is, you have no history. There'll never be a mourning for you. Everybody will rejoice your death. Let's go on. Shall be buried with the burial of a donkey, dragged and cast out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out and lift up your voice to Bashan, cry out to Abrin, for all the lovers are destroyed. I spoke to you in your prosperity, but you said I will not hear. This has been your manner from your youth, that you did not obey my voice. The wind shall eat up all your rulers, and your lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then you will be ashamed and humiliated for all your wickedness. O inhabitants of Lebanon, making your nest in the cedars, how gracious will you be when pangs come upon you like pain of a woman in labor. So this is not, I mean, this is God talking to a king and the way he is creating the kingdom. Um, you know, of course, this is what Jeremiah is saying to him too, by the way, because both uh, Jeremiah and Jehoiakim are both alive at the same time. Uh, Jehoiakim is the king of Jeremiah's prophecy at this time. And Daniel is a youth. He probably, I'm sure he's familiar with Jeremiah. I know he is very familiar with King Jehoiakim. So this is an interesting moment to truly understanding what's about to happen with this being besieged. Now, the prophecy that Jeremiah has for Jehoiakim and Judah continues on through chapter 23, but I want to take a moment and I want to jump into chapter 24 specifically because, you know, Daniel's about to get led off into captivity with all the other Israelites, uh, or all the other uh, men and women of Judah, with the exception of a few, and we'll kind of get into who's left behind here as well. But Believe me, this is so important to understand why is Jeremiah or why is Daniel going to go through what Daniel's about to go through, and why is he so prosperous through it all? Because Daniel's a very prosperous guy throughout all of captivity. Um, how does he thrive so well in captivity while everybody else in Judah suffers? And that's very important. So uh, Jeremiah tells us why in chapter 24. The Lord showed me. And there were two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jesaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So, you know, there's Daniel. That's what happened to Daniel. This is Jeremiah talking about this. Let's pick it up. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, the good figs are very good, and the bad figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad. And again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, thus does the Lord God of Israel, like these figs, so I will acknowledge those who are carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good into the land of the Chaldeans. 
For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. And as this bad figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad, surely thus says the Lord, so I will give up Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his princes, his residue of Jerusalem, who remains in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt, I will deliver them to trouble into all the kingdoms of the earth for their harm to be a reproach and a byword, a taunt and a curse in all places I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, the pestilence among them till they are consumed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. So ultimately what he's saying is those who are going to be led off into captivity, this is good. This is good for them. It is going to give them a heart for God. This is going to give them everything they need. He is going to take care of them. He is going to shepherd them. He is going to guard over them. He is going to strengthen them. He is going to enrich them. He is going to prosper them. I mean, everything good that God has, he's going to then put that on the captives. Everybody left behind, rot away. Uh, just rot. Uh, raiders are going to come in, wars, famine, pestilence, destruction. It, it's not going to be good at all. Let's go on. Chapter 25. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, this is the twenty-third year in which the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. And the Lord has sent you all his servants, the prophets, rising early, and sending them, but you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now, every one of his evil way and his evil doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. Do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them, and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, and I will not harm you. Yet you have not listened to me, says the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around, and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing, a perpetual desolation. So ultimately what you got, and you know, so again, I just want to kind of put you in the mood here. What you have is you have Jeremiah yelling this at the kings. He's yelling this at the people. Uh, he's been doing it for 23 years at this point. Um, you know, the distance between some of these chapters, I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, but he's been doing this for the book of Jeremiah, the 23-year period of time of Jeremiah prophesying these warnings to these people. And that's why they're where they are. And it's because of Jehoiakim. You know, and I, I just want to reflect on who this man is. 36 verse 5. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against him and bound him in bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried off some of the articles from the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, the abominations which he did, and what was found against him, indeed, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then in Jehoiachin, his son reigned in his place. It's amazing what one leader can do to a nation. And, you know, for 23 years, Jeremiah had been pleading with the people and nothing changed. And that's, you know, I'm just going to apply this today real quick. You know, there is no way that God is okay with how America is. There's no way he could, when this is the God we're talking about, when we're talking about this God, there is no way that he is okay with any of this. There's just no way. 
And really God has a couple results to countries like that. Destruction, enslavement, or both. Um, and that's what he's raining down here. And so, you know, if we go back to Daniel 1, verse 1, it says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Um, you know, and he, I, I want to remind you, he reigned for 11 years. So this is in the third year. And what we're going to find out when we look in um, Kings and Chronicles is that he gave away a lot of people to Nebuchadnezzar. You know, Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged it, but that wasn't the end. It went on for a while. Um, it continued on for many years of just this kind of giving Nebuchadnezzar everything he wanted, giving him, you know, just giving the people away, giving them away, not fighting for them at all, making arrangements for enslavement and murder is what Jehoiakim was in the business of doing. And uh, you know, this went on for a long time until finally God then brought it all down and they were all let off. But th this went on, this this thing that Jehoiakim did until, you know, eventually Nebuchadnezzar came and they, he put him in <laughs> brass fetters and you know, took him away. Again, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, it's very important we know who he is and why the, it, God's people are in this situation. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. So there you go. I hope this video is helping. Stick with me. There's a lot going on. I mean, we're going to dig deep into what's going on with this besiegement and how this all played out and why it all, because it's not just that they got besieged. And that's where I think the problem is people just read that and they go, okay. It's not like Nebuchadnezzar came in one day and just destroyed everything, let off everybody off in captivity. This besiegement went on for decades. A um, lot played out during this time, and Daniel was a victim of that. So, hope these videos are helping. Stick with us. Daniel opens up the heart of God. Uh, you want to understand the heart and the will and the ways of God, Dan Daniel's your best. Well, I, I, it's a great one. I'm not saying it's, but it's a good one. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So, never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.